Math 083, Final Exam Review, Problem 19, Parts A, B, and C. In Part A, because the radical is isolated, there is no other number multiplied, divided, added, or subtracted to the radical, and because the radical is a square root, we then apply the second power to both sides of the equation. On the left hand side we get 4x plus 1. On the right hand side we get 25. Subtracting 1 from both sides we have 4x equals 24. And dividing both sides by 4 we get x equals 6. A quick check would prove that this solution is indeed correct. Let's look at part B. Again we want to begin by isolating this radical. On its side of the equation, there is a positive 7 added to it. So our first step will be to subtract 7 from both sides of this equation. On the left-hand side of the equation, the radical is now isolated. Since the radical is a cube root, we will apply the third power to both sides of the equation. Cubing a cube root gives us the radicand, the stuff inside the radical, 3y plus 10. On the right hand side, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. Now we subtract 10 from both sides. 3 times y equals negative 18. Divide both sides by 3, we get y equals negative 6. You can check that this solution is indeed correct. Let's look at part C. Again, your opening move for solving a radical equation is to isolate the radical expression. We can do that here by adding 1 to both sides of the equation. On the left hand side we have the square root of 2x plus 5. That radical is indeed now isolated. On the right hand side we have x plus 1. Because the root is a square root, we will square both sides of the equation. Squaring a square root gives us the radicand, the stuff inside the radical, 2x plus 5. On the right hand side, we have x plus 1 quantity squared, which means x plus 1 times x plus 1. We FOIL. We gather like terms. The presence of this x squared, being the highest power of x, means that this is a quadratic equation, and we must solve the equation now through one of our quadratic equation solving methods. We will get zero by pushing the terms to the side of the equation where the x squared is. We will subtract 2x, subtract 2x, subtract 5, subtract 5. We do indeed now have zero on the left hand side of the equation. On the right hand side, these two terms coincidentally added to 0, and we have x squared minus 4. The right hand side factors as x plus 2 times x minus 2. We set x plus 2 equal to 0, and we set x minus 2 equal to 0. We get x equals negative 2, and we get x equals positive 2. Now we need to check these, and I will leave that to you. As it turns out, x equals 2 does check in the original equation, but x equals negative 2 does not. So there is only one solution, x equals 2.